song. Hey, today we're going to learn how to encode messages just like a spy for Mission Impossible. Okay, well, maybe not quite so cool like Mission Impossible, but uh, doesn't that song get your blood pumping? It's, it's a great movie. Uh, we're going to uh, make sure you need to have a graphing calculator for this lesson, so if you don't have one, you're going to need one in order to complete these exercises. Uh, for encoding messages, before we get into how we do this lesson, what I'd like you to do is pause the video and try and decode this message. This message is one that I've given students in years past, and I've got about 20-30% of my kids can usually figure this out, so just give it a try and see what this message is. I'm not giving you any hints on it. Okay, so some of you have figured out that these numbers represent letters, and it's just as simple as the alphabet. The first letter in the alphabet is A, and so if that's the case, then the number 2 would be B, the number 3 would be a C, and as you continue through the alphabet, you'd get math, the zero is actually stands for a space, and then you get rocks, math rocks, cool message. Okay, so what we're going to do today is learn how to encode some messages. Now that's a very, very basic encoding method, just swapping out numbers for letters using the alphabet. We're going to get a little bit more complicated. Just for some fun examples though, this is kind of fun where, where encryption is used. I like this lesson a lot because it really has some real world applications. And while we're not going to be doing things nearly as intense as what you're going to see right here, uh, it is helpful because they all have the same type of principles that are used for encryption or encoding. So here's a quick little video on uh, how the Navajo language was used in World War II. During World War II, over 400 Navajo enlisted in the United States Marines, many with a very special and secret purpose. Navajo code talkers used their native languages during the war in the Pacific to communicate and pass on messages. It is widely said that the great success the United States experienced at the Battle of Iwo Jima would not have happened without the Navajo code talkers. In the 1940s, an estimated 30 or fewer non-Navajo spoke or understood the incredibly complex language, which at that time was unwritten and without an alphabet. The code was further complicated by using word substitution. For instance, the Navajo word for hummingbird was code for a fighter plane. The alphabet had to be used differently as well. For example, the Navajo word for ant was used to stand for the English letter A. The language stumped the Japanese, previously notorious for hacking into private lines and breaking complex codes with ease. And then we have this thing called the Caesar cipher. This was used back in the days of Julius Caesar and was actually used for quite a long time after Julius Caesar. Uh, so this is, we're talking more than 2,000 years ago. Uh, and here's a, another little history video lesson, about a minute long here. The first well-known cipher, a substitution cipher, was used by Julius Caesar around 58 BC. It is now referred to as the Caesar cipher. Caesar shifted each letter in his military commands in order to make them appear meaningless should the enemy intercept it. Imagine Alice and Bob decided to communicate using the Caesar cipher. First, they would need to agree in advance on a shift to use, say three. So to encrypt her message, Alice would need to apply a shift of three to each letter in her original message. So A becomes D, B becomes E, C becomes F, and so on. This unreadable or encrypted message is then sent to Bob openly. Then Bob simply subtracts the shift of three from each letter in order to read the original message. Incredibly, this basic cipher was used by military leaders for hundreds of years after Caesar. I fought and won. But I haven't conquered over man's spirit, which is indomitable. However, a lock is only as strong as its weakest point. A lock breaker may look for mechanical flaws, or failing that, extract information in order to narrow down the correct combination. The process of lock breaking and code breaking are very similar. The weakness of the Caesar cipher was published 800 years later by an Arab mathematician named Al-Kindi. He broke the Caesar cipher by using a clue based on an important property of the language a message is written in. If you scan text from any book and count the frequency of each letter, you will find a fairly consistent pattern. For example, these are the letter frequencies of English. This can be thought of as a fingerprint of English. 
We leave this fingerprint when we communicate without realizing it. This clue is one of the most valuable tools for a code breaker. To break this cipher, they count up the frequencies of each letter in the encrypted text and check how far the fingerprint has shifted. For example, if H is the most popular letter in the encrypted message instead of E, then the shift was likely 3. So they reversed the shift in order to reveal the original message. This is called frequency analysis, and it was a blow to the security of the Caesar cipher. And then the last thing I have on here is what's called WPA, which is Wi-Fi Protected Access. And if anything that uses Wi-Fi would be using this, I mean, think about it, you have your smartphones, your iPads, printers sometimes even have Wi-Fi on it. You can have your little modification on your Xbox so that it's Wi-Fi instead of used with cable. And even TVs now have uh, Wi-Fi in it. And if it's sending a Wi-Fi signal, you want it to be encrypted so that not anyone can just access it and control your stuff. And so that encryption or encoding has a, a very specific process. Okay, now it's not exactly what we're doing today, but there, there's some similar traits to it. So when you look at this message that we had before, we knew it was math rocks. One of the videos on the Caesar cipher, it talked about this, the frequency of letters. If all we used was that same cipher and just shifted the letters, the problem is that this letter E occurs most frequently in the English language. And, so, and same with some of these other vowels, the A occurs often. The consonant, consonant T occurs often. And it would be fairly simple with enough messages to figure out what, how far we shifted this. So we're going to do something that does something much more complex than just shifting the letters by using a matrix. And here's how we do it. You take the original numbers that you, we had. And in our case, with math rocks, we had those numbers. You take the original numbers and you're going to multiply it by a top secret special matrix. If you don't know what that special matrix is, we call it really the encoding matrix. I like top secret, it sounds cooler though. If you don't know the top secret ma uh, matrix, then this doesn't work. You, you can't do anything, you gotta know what it is. Usually we just make it up. And then when you multiply your original numbers by your special matrix, you get the encoded numbers. And the, let me get rid of here, we have the dimensions, I forgot to show those. The dimensions of this first one is always a one by two, meaning we have one row and two columns. So it's only two numbers at a time. And then this one is always a two by two. Special matrix, top secret matrix is a two by two. And if you think back to your multiplication of matrices, when you multiply those, hopefully you know that the dimensions will give you a one by two. So you start off by a, with two numbers, one row, two columns, and you end up with two new numbers. So let's do an example of this. Here we have the phrase, Algebra 2 is easy. Now just as a heads up, I actually decided, I made this problem and I thought, wow, this is too long. So for our practice, I'm just going to take these first two words, Algebra 2, because to do this whole thing is going to take us forever. So we're going to take those, this phrase and encode it with this matrix. So here's how it works first. You must figure out what the numbers are for each of those letters. And just so to make it easy, on the back page, your second page of the notes, so the second page of the notes, back page of what you're looking at, is this at the bottom. That will help you to transfer all the numbers to letters. Now I've saved some time, and I already had them prepared. So here's what those numbers are. And if you notice here, here's an A, an A, and an A there. And so that would mean that there should be three A's that show up within our numbers in those spots. And there we go. There's their one. There's the one, and there's the one. And remember what zeros represent? The zeros are the spaces. Okay, so that these all these numbers represent algebra 2 is easy. Not that that's necessarily true for everyone, but... All right, now what we're going to do is take these numbers two at a time. So we take this right here, 1, 12, and we're going to multiply it by 3, negative 2, negative 5, 4. And when we multiply that and that together will get two new numbers. So let me grab the calculator. Now on your calculator, if you, when you hit mode, don't have the word next at the bottom, then you're going to have to do this using the uh, second matrix and then go in here and edit your matrices. Uh, but for those of you who do have that, I'm gonna do it, whoops, I'm gonna use the alpha F3 option and create a one by two matrix and then I'm going to get 1 here, 12 here, and let me use my mouse, it speeds this up a little bit, 
And then uh, let's see here, what am I doing next? Alpha F3, I'm doing a two by two matrix. And scroll down. Okay, this one is a three, negative two, negative five. This is my top secret matrix. And then there we go. So when I multiply those first two numbers by my top secret matrix, I get negative 5746. So I would put down here, in fact, I already did, so I'm going to speed this up. I would go 57, where where did I put it? 57 and 46, those are my first two numbers. Keep going. So now we take the next numbers. So the next two numbers here are going to be 7 and 5. Instead of going alpha F3, or for in, if you were doing second matrix, what we can do is just do a second and then the enter button. And if we hit second enter, it brings up our last entry. And now we don't have to retype the entire uh, top secret matrix because it's going to be the same thing every time. And then we just come here and we type in a seven. And then here, uh, let's clear that and type in a five. Remember, delete if you have too many numbers there. And then just hit enter. There's our next two numbers. And then you keep doing this, and you keep doing this over and over again for the next two numbers. I'll just do it one more time. So negative 4, 6, and then second enter. Scroll over here, and now we're putting in 2 and 18. So 2 and 18. So this is a lot of calculator work, negative 84 and 68. So as you go here, we would get those answers if we kept going. So you saw negative 4, 6, negative 84, 68, just like I have here on my calculator. Okay, so that is encoding a message. You, you put it into the numbers that re are represented by the alphabet, and then you use this matrix. Now here's the interesting thing about this. If you look through here, as we go, negative 57 was A. So where's the next A? It was right here. So which number corresponds to that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Notice here that the 1 went to a negative 57, and here it didn't repeat itself. Let's keep going. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. No, I'll just go from the end here. Third from the end is a 1. Third from the end is a 74. That one became a 74. It did not repeat itself. And the reason this works out like that is because we're using these four numbers with matrices. It's going to make it fairly complicated. You're not going to have numbers repeat. That's why this is so hard to break. You're, you would need to know this special top secret matrix to decode it. And with that, let's figure out how to decode messages. So here, to decode the message, you need to know couple things here, the top secret matrix, but this time you're going to start with the encoded numbers and you're going to go backwards to the original numbers. And this time, instead of multiplying by the top secret matrix, you're going to multiply by the top secret matrix's inverse. So you would type it out and then you just do that little inverse key. Okay, but everything else is going to be the same. So pause that if you need to write that stuff down and then let's do it. This is our last example and then we're all finished off, finished up. In order to decode a message, we would take these numbers and again, these are the numbers that are kind of crazy, the the encoded numbers. You always know that because if I had a negative, then these obviously were encoded. So we need to decrypt these or decode them. So what we do is we take two numbers at a time again. I'm going to take 1 and 11. This time I will multiply it by the matrix that was used to encode it, but it's inverse. Okay, remember that? So we'll take the calculator and we take the first two numbers and then when to decode, we use the inverse of that top secret matrix. So here we go. All right, so I'm going to bring up just my last entry because I already know that uh, the dimensions are going to work out. So I have 1 and then 11. I'm going to come over here, and this one is now a negative 1. The next one, I'm going to hit 5, and then I don't want 52, so delete that. And then here, it'll be a 3, and delete that extra number. And then the last one is a 4. Now, I don't just hit Enter here because I'm not encoding it. I'm decoding it. So I use the inverse, and then hit Enter. 2 and 1. There's our first numbers. So let me see here two, and one. Okay, why don't you pause the video just for the practice and uh, and you do it, the rest of these. Remember, use the inverse. Okay, you should have come up with the rest of them using the next two numbers at a time. So we'd get, again, you take the 13 and 15, and then you multiply it by the inverse, the 54 and the 18, multiply it by the inverse, and so forth. You keep going. And if there's 
in your message, sometimes you'll have just a zero at the end. That's because there wasn't an even number of numbers, so you had to throw in an extra number there. Uh, and that would just be a zero at the end if there was an extra one. Okay, so here's a space. So then you have to just go through. Well, this is kind of easy. Alphabetically, there's your A. This means that's a B. There's an E, and you just keep going. And the message was Babe Ruth. Okay, you're at the end of your, your uh, lesson. That's it. That's what we're doing today, encoding and decoding messages. And in the spirit of encryption, just have a nice little video. This isn't The Matrix. This is just a nice little video on a kind of a fun movie called A Beautiful Mind. And this is a clip where you've got this guy who's really smart, and he's walking in and seeing a bunch of numbers for the government, and they want him, they want him to help the government uh, to decode some secret, top secret spy messages. All right, good luck on your mastery check. I'm glad you could come, Doctor. Hello. Right this way. We've been intercepting radio transmissions from Moscow. The computer can't detect a pattern, but I'm sure it's code. Why is that, General? Ever just know something, Dr. Nash? Constantly. We've developed several ciphers. If you'd like to review our preliminary data. Doctor. Gentlemen, we need to move on this. 